Great, good evening. Thanks for showing up. So we're going to start with a little bit of breathing again, just to center ourselves, just to connect and relax. And just as an indication, I always uh, invite us when we're doing um, breathing sessions at the beginning is to start with in through the nose and out through the mouth. When you breathe in through the nose, you're breathing the energy down from the higher centers, if you like. And breathing out from the mouth is like grounding, grounding into the body. Yeah, so it's always an integrating breath. So you want to close your eyes, get comfortable. Nice big in breath through the nose. Out breath. Just this sensation of gathering, connecting, arriving. Also relaxing and opening. So just imagine we can breathe in through every aspect of our body all at once. So you're breathing in a big circle around your body. So everything breathing in, everything breathing out. Okay, so I'm going to invite us to do um, a little bit more work with the breath now. So breathing, pulling the energy up and then out like this. So you breathe the energy up and then around. So imagine you're drawing up the roots, the branches, and then integrating the branches down into the roots. <coughs> up from the branches. The roots, and the other way around, <laughs> through the branches, down to the roots. And I just spiraling the energy just around the heart, just turning the energy. Just imagine right in the center of your chest is a, a flower and you're breathing in. That's the sunlight, breathing out the petals of the flower opening. Breathing in and opening. It's a nice big breath. And relax. So you can keep your eyes open or closed. I'm just going to speak a little guided meditation now. So the first thing, I just really want to call in the wisdom of life to be really present here with us, where I'm sitting, where you're sitting or standing, where you're being. So inviting life to show up in presence, in fullness. I invite us to be open-minded, open-hearted, open-bodied, open to receive, express, ask questions, engage, and to present the information, the energy that's perfect for this moment in time. So this prayer of trusting the transmission of presence. And tonight we're going to hear what is necessary for us what we're ready to receive about the subject of potential and what this deeply means for us. I invite us to be aware, heartful of our breathing this evening. So you're very present with the breath of life moving in and out from you. And also if you find yourself sitting still for a while, just moving the shoulders, having a little shake, the breath, the sound, so you keep your body engaged. 
And the invitation I want to offer is to listen with your mind, but also deeper than mind in the heart and in the body and in your energy. And to listen as an opening of consciousness, as an opening of awareness. So there may be things I say which necessarily don't make sense in the mind, but the body may feel a resonance or may make perfect sense in the heart and the mind gently receives the impression of the words. So it's really engaging this, what I call multidimensional listening, being open and available to receive. Mm -hmm. So very welcome everybody. And uh, it's great to be here live. And for those who watch this later as well, hope you really enjoy the transmission this evening. <coughs> so this is the new vision, new view challenge. And the subject this evening is presence. No, look at that. I'm so present. The subject tonight is potential. <laughs> Yesterday we spoke about presence. And how these weave together and how this integrates and harmonizes and the invitation tonight is to recognize something new and fresh about yourselves to be open to receive new teachings new medicine new realization new insight about the nature of potential for the purpose of engaging in a deeper richer more abundant, nutritious, enlivened quality of experience as a human being for yourself, for your relationships, for the world. And considering this question, what is the potential of the human being? What is our potential? What is possible with us as we start to really open up? as we really start to engage in possibility. Yeah, during this evening, please ask questions. And uh, if you've got notes, maybe you want to make some notes, the recording is going to stay up here as well. I'll do an edited version for later as well. So you can review this again. So if anyone has any questions to start with around potential or how you comprehend, understand, or activate potential, please just pop them in the comments yeah. and I'm beginning begin with a little presentation so I was contemplating today I was out for a walk with my daughter she's nearly 10 months out in the snow and it's in this open consideration inquiry as I was walking along recognizing in my view that we have onboard potentials which I'll explain in a moment and we have potentials that live in the space spaciousness that surrounds us and this links in with what we were talking about yesterday whether we define ourselves as a human being in a skin border within a story border you know, whether we consider this is what it is to be human to live inside this this context like this or whether we are simultaneously multi-dimensional beings coexisting through different intelligences at different levels in different ways simultaneously and that our growing in evolution is an awareness of embracing more of who and how we are so when it comes to potential onboard potentials so an onboard potential would be your physical characteristics you know DNA your genetic code it would be the thought forms that you're conditioned into. It would be the ancestral patterns that you've been given to inherit in your life. The things that exist within the physical structure and the mental structure that we come to identify with, that in some ways are visible, either visible through our language, our writing, our books, or visible through our biology. So this is the familiar way of looking at potential. Yeah, my potential, something that I own, something that belongs to me. And in this case, we have the discussion of nature nurture, so there's certain things I'm born with and there's certain aspects I cultivate and develop through time. 
So this sensation that I'm growing and evolving in my physicality, you know, the developmental stages. Now the thing I want to present to you tonight and give emphasis to is what I'm going to call quantum potential. That which exists in the spaciousness. And it's a very different approach to potential. It's not what I come on into life with. It's what I'm able to access. It's my capacity to access and to relate with and to engage with and to express from and with. So this consideration that who I am as awareness is a stretchy phenomenon. It's like an elastic band can stretch out into the cosmos, stretch out and experience more of a life force and can utilize this. Now I want to give this presentation as a, it's not an argument, but it's a, it's a demonstration, if you like, to explain how phenomena such as telepathy, empathy, healing, clairvoyance, remote viewing, all these experiences that happen in what's called field awareness. They happen through the field of experience, the quantum field. If we were just skin-boarded mind definition identities, how would empathy be possible? Empathy, which is feeling resonance, which is a, a felt sense presence, when you can engage with someone at a distance, how would healing be possible? The transmission of energy across space and time, across uh, country borders, instantaneously. How is it possible that these things can operate? And yet all of us had a demonstration this evening. My uh, girlfriend just had a feeling to walk towards the phone. She got to the phone, the phone rang, it was her friend calling. So she anticipated, sensed, felt, and connected telepathically with her friend who was communicating with her before the phone rang. I am sure, and if you want to, you can comment, that we've all had these experiences of telepathy, empathy. And I want you to deeply consider how this is possible, how this functions, because it very much influences the way that our view, our vision of potential, operates. A lot of people, and uh, maybe this is you or has been you, you know, consider themselves limited inside of what they can do or can't do, abilities, characteristics, functions, all these things, and lets this definition of a limitation inhibit a deeper expression that could be and is possible. So consider, how does love move between the space? Now we've all felt love, we all feel love, we transmit love, we are love. How does love move about between us? How does this energy, this quality, this dynamic presence express between us? It's not a thought, it's not an idea, it's not a philosophy, it's not a religion, it's not a concept. It's an energetic phenomenon, it's an experience. So the suggestion is that love is moving through and from and with the quantum field. Now yesterday we had this conversation, I was mis presenting that what we're emerging into in our presence is this state of expansion. Already, always, freedom. This foundation of being this unlimited space of being that's always been here. And in states of meditation, or deep inquiry, deep listening, where we soften, surrender, and allow ourselves to fully be present, we start to engage with these expansive fields of energy and consciousness. This is what we call on the quantum level. If you were to track this through brain state, brain wave research, on the outermost level we have beta wave rhythm. Beta wave is the thinking process, the what we call the prefrontal cortex, analysis and comparison and stressful engagement often. In beta wave rhythm we experience stress and tension, anger, upset, these kind of emotions, these kind of contracted thoughts. Take a nice deep breath. Take a nice deep breath. Relax. 
Listen to my soft voice. Listen to your breath. Deepen your awareness. You start to shift from a beta state, brainwave state, into alpha wave. There's a slowing down and an opening up. As you shift from beta into alpha, you also experience time differently. Uh, I'm looking for this piece of research I haven't found yet between the correlation between time experience and expanded states of consciousness and energy. Because I know we all feel these. Yeah, in beta wave, it's very stressful. It's like we measure the clock almost by the 24-hour the clock, the tick-tock of reality. But in alpha wave, we start to feel more spaciousness, more time, more ease, and things start to open up. People have suggested that in alpha wave rhythm, there is no conflict. It's not even possible to be in conflict. Conflict doesn't exist in alpha brainwave. So this is useful to know, isn't it, in bringing peace or more harmony, is to simply shift your brainwave states. So you go deeper into theta and delta, and even deeper into gamma. Yeah. And at each of these states, different phenomena occur. We move into deep states of healing, vision, yeah, this uh, clairvoyance, clairaudience, realms of inspiration into pure silence and awareness. And they've done lots of experiments, uh, wiring up Tibetan yogis and all sorts of different mystical people in different brainwave states to study this phenomena. Now I've got a suggestion that what's been measured on the brainwaves is the after effect, the after effect of consciousness and energy. So what I mean by this is I was um, discussing yesterday that the brain, the body, in my view, is a receiving, transmitting instrument. It's like a radio station. And the broadcast, the mind, the heart, consciousness and energy is being broadcast. And I'm receiving and tuning in and the radio station is being broadcast through me a piece of music is playing through me the inspiration is playing through me the thoughts emotions all phenomena so what's happening is i'm expanding my state of consciousness and energy and they're wiring up the brain and they're measuring the response of that expansion as a brain effect and i'm saying it like this because if we believe the brain is producing this, then we stay within the skin borders of self-definition. -def if you have a sense that consciousness and energy in the expanded field is causing this, and the brain and body is receiving the effect of this, and what's being measured is the effect. Hmm. Now, it's very useful to learn how to shift states of consciousness and energy how to expand our awareness, to expand the field for this very reason that we can access deep states of harmony, deep states of peace, deep states of vision, which we're going to look more into tomorrow, just by shifting our state, our trance state, our state of presence. So I'm just going to take a breath, I invite you to take a breath. I invite you to close your eyes. And just practice the power of imagination, images. So I want you to tune in to a moment in life where you felt content in your body, at ease. Just take a nice big breath and really take yourself into this moment with as many of your senses as possible. So what can you see in the environment around you? What does it feel like to be there? What's actually happening? Smells, tastes, colors, movement. Really allow yourself to just drop into this 
living video of a past experience in a beautiful place where you felt calm, at ease, and content. Nice deep breath now into the belly, up into the chest, just slowing down. And spreading this experience with your breath, spreading it through your whole body. And as you're looking out with your vision eyes, with your imagination, I also invite you to feel the quality of contentment in the environment all around you. There's other people there, natural world. There's a certain event happening. Just really invite you to spread the feeling of contentment and harmony in the space. Just to amplify even more now on the in-breath, breathing in harmony. On the out-breath, breathing out harmony. Feel a sweet relaxation of this in breath into harmony. Out breath into harmony. Okay, so very, very gently, very, very softly and slowly. I just want you to softly open your eyes right now. Keep breathing in. Breathe in the harmony. On the out-breath, spread the harmony into the space you're in right now. So imagine you've got like beautiful beams of golden light coming out of the eyes. Like spreading harmony into the space. Breathing in. Each breath this sensation of harmony getting stronger, stronger, more relaxed, more content, more here, more able, more alive. Also just sensing you're flooding your system, your body, uh, your thoughts, your emotions, sensations, the energy of the body. Just feel that your whole body is, is being blessed right now with this activated energy of harmony contentment, ease of being. So what I want to just share with you there is that what we just did, we just went into a, a memory. We selected a memory that where there was an experience of harmony or contentment, ease of being, simple joy. And we really tuned into it and took time tuning into it. Like really engage all the senses. And it's like a, a virtual reality journey. You're really journeying back into the memory. In shamanism, they call this recapitulation. It's not just like the surface memory where you just glance at it. You re-enter it lucidly. Like in a dream, you know, sometimes you're so convinced of the dream that you really feel that you're in it, you're alive in it, you're awake in it. And when you enter a living memory like this, you're re-accessing the feelings, the quality, the vibration. Okay, so we're accessing a memory, an image, a feeling that we've lived. So that's stage one. And spend some time in that. And spend some time dwelling in this amplification of this feeling. You know? And the more you breathe into it, the more you tune into it, the bigger it gets, the stronger the message, the stronger the signal. So you start to really shift into this energy of harmony, contentment, relaxation. The principle from yesterday, just to remind us, is where we place our focus, energy goes. Where energy goes, experience happens. So the stronger our focus, like the more tuned in we are to this contented harmonic memory, the more that energy expands of that, 
the more that becomes us. And then the second stage of this practice is to then transfer this energy into the present moment. So you make a very smooth, soft, easy transition, gently opening the eyes and keep the breath. Like the breath is the, the, the song of harmony that's continuous through us. And then you breathe it into this moment. So I hope you can see the value of this, the, the value of resourcing something we've lived where there was beauty, harmony, contentment, love, joy, peace. And we're bringing that, transferring that into this present moment. Now in doing this, what we've actually done is we're inducing a trance state, an alpha wave rhythm, or even a theta wave rhythm in the brain. That's how it'd be measured if you were being wired up right now. And this creates a level of expansion in which more potential is available. More potential. So let's consider the possibility that our potential shifts and changes according to the state of consciousness and energy that we're in. So a beta wave potential, which is largely a stress response, would have the energy of will driving it. It would have thought pushing it. It would have belief determining it. So it would be a potential which is contained in a stress response. Okay. Now, I don't know if you can relate to that. Please feel free to in engage on the comments. Welcome, Christina, as well. Thanks for coming in. So this idea of accessing our potential when we're in a beta wave rhythm and a stress response. Now you can imagine that that kind of potential is going to be a bit crackly. It's going to be a bit stiff and stuck and tense and not free flowing. It's going to have angularity to it as an experience. It's going to need to be pushed by motivation. It's going to need to be forced. because That's the nature of the beta wave. That's how it functions in our system in the world, in the culture, in the life. So right now we've just done a shape-shifting of our trance state, our consciousness and energy. We've taken ourselves deliberately, on purpose, into a contented, harmonic state of being. Now the flower, if you like, if you see yourself as flower, is more open, the petals are more open. They're more open, there's more capacity for sunlight to come in. If they're tight and closed, like in hiding, then what's going to be present is survival, fear, stress, anxiety. So the remedy here is to shift your state of consciousness and energy. Shamanism, yogis, mystics have known this for thousands of years. If you keep staying at the same level, trying to fix the problem from the same level the problem is created, you're going to keep circling around. So tension does not resolve tension. Drop underneath it, go deeper, go deeper. So really, hopefully, inspiring you to engage in more deeply with your meditative state. The capacity you all have, each one of us has, we're endowed with this primary potential to shift states of consciousness and energy. So let's consider what happens in an alpha state. So I'm more relaxed, calmer, my experience of time is that I've got time. There's time enough for the moment. There's the time of presence. I'm no longer driven by the clock, by an agenda, by a stress response, by a deadline. I'm in a flowing state of relaxation. Now because I'm flowing, because I'm open, because I'm relaxed, I'm responding with life. This is a very important distinction to take in. The difference between a response and a reaction. In beta wave rhythm, we're reacting to the stimulus outside of us. In alpha wave, theta, delta, gamma, we are responding. So we've shifted into a deeper listening state. In beta wave, the intellect is prioritized. In alpha, instinct and intuition opens. 
and becomes obvious. This is the way that this intelligence functions best. We're relaxed, open, gentle, receptive. So now we have access to much, much more potential than we did before because there's more opening. Again, we're going to look at this a bit more tomorrow, but the delta wave, theta delta, is visionary state. It's like there's an exact realm, exact vibration or dimension, which is visionary. It's like a country. It's like an inner country. It's part of the inner landscape that we can deliberately access. So on purpose, we can enter the realm of vision. There's a certain vibration. There's a certain consciousness. It's like we knock on the door. We open the door. We go through the door, and we're in the realm of vision. And it's something we can learn to live on purpose with. So we're going to get deeper into that tomorrow with the visionary work. But I want to come back to something I brought up at the beginning. Uh, I'll just say this for Christina as well, and other people who are coming in, is the distinction between onboard potentials, which are the potentials of the body, which are in, in the visible universe, and of the thoughts and stories, and then it's what I'm calling, which I want to give more emphasis to tonight, is potentials we can access. So we're going to call this the quantum field, okay? Quantum field surrounds us. The quantum field is the quantum soup from which everything is born. In you, I live, move, and have my being. It's a more mystical way to present this. It's the very foundation of existence. Now, it's only invisible to three-dimensional eyes. You know, when we're looking out, expecting to see the material form, the quantum field is existing as vibration. And... Uh, the physical eyes have not yet been tuned to see vibration as clearly. It's like uh, dogs, for example, can listen to other acoustic sensitivities than we can as humans. There's different levels of acoustic range. It's so wanting to be a consideration. There's different sensitivities in, it, in all human beings to the vibrational range. It often follows our belief. Yeah? Consider this. If you believe that this is a material universe and that things are things, then Okay, look how it disappeared, and I'm back again. Yeah. Great, I'm back. Hello. Yeah. So, in the materialistic interpretation, there's subjects and objects, and there's distance between us, and there's separation. And I've got to get from here to there, and that's the way that it works three dimensional reality. When we start to enter into the, the quantum realm, we start to recognize what's called field awareness or field intelligence and energy. So you start to recognize that we're surrounded in a sea of consciousness all the time. It's like a vibrating life force. There is no space. There is no vacuum. There is no gaps between us or anything. Everything is connected, interconnected. It's one beautifully colored tapestry of existence. Now, the more sensitive you become, yeah. And when I mean sensitive, I mean you cultivate mediumship capacity to uh, grasp clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience. You start to become much, much more sensitive with your organism, with your human instrument. And you start to detect more of these field phenomena around you. But if you're very fixed in a belief that there is no God, there is no quantum field, then you're going to keep seeing and looking for that fixed belief. So it might begin with you as a belief. Yesterday we talked about going beyond belief, but maybe a belief is a starting point for the unbeliever. So consider the possibility that there's a quantum field, that they are surrounded by a sea of consciousness and energy, which you can access. This gives you the beginning place to begin to start to notice this. So you start to notice vibrations. You start to get more sensitive to empathy. Telepathy becomes more apparent. Synchronicity becomes more obvious in your life. Yeah, we can call this higher functioning, or we can call this expanded functioning. I like to use the word ESP, not for extra sensory perception, but expanded sensory perception. Then I'm expanding my capacity for hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, touching. 
expanding these capacities and becoming more and more sensitive with everything. And this allows me to feel the field that's around me. If you're not in this sensitivity, then these words aren't really going to make so much sense because you're going to think, how can I access the, the field as a thought? You can't approach field awareness through beta consciousness because beta consciousness is not designed to operate in field dynamics. It's designed to operate in four and the physical phenomena, what we call the physical phenomena. So as we shift consciousness and energy, relax, open, we start to enter into these more delicate realms. So I'm calling all of this potential that you can access. So I have both onboard potentials, you have onboard potentials, which you've cultivated, which you've inherited, which you're developing and growing into day by day by day as you're evolving. You have your knowledge, your embodiment, uh, your capacities for thought and emotion. And then we also have accessing potentials. And in my vision of humanity that we're emerging into, this is going to become more and more and more obvious to more of us more often. And it has such a huge impact, the possibility of this. I want you to contemplate this over the next day or so. The possibility of opening up these higher functioning, sensitive ways of connecting and accessing the quantum field shifts the whole notion of relationship, expression, potential, inspiration. First of all, it really totally explains how telepathy works, how healing works, how empathy works. These are field phenomena. Yeah, we're tuning in, like right now you're tuning into me, here I am in Prague, there you are in your place in the world. We're tuning in, and through the attunement we find connection. And I hear, Christina, your words are totally, well, I can't read the last part because, <laughs> yeah, let's see. It makes sense, yeah. So you've got an attunement at a distance, which means that you're resonating. There's a resonance because we're tuning into the same field, intelligence, and energy. <laughs> so yeah, I've been contemplating this all day and actually for a large part of my life this potential that we can access how this changes everything so for example I can do what I can do to cultivate more exercise more nutrition, more sleep, more rest and do all the stuff that helps the body function in a good way and this is usually what we determine as health and wellness, the skin boarded experience of being human. So I'm playing my part of it in the physical body from the perspective of the body. Now, to access potentials of heightened states of wellness and well being would also be to include the energy field that surrounds me. So there's the breath, of course. I'm breathing in, breathing out. So the breath originated outside of my skin border, interacts through my nostrils and mouth and becomes me. Yeah, then I release it and transform it. Now a subtle energy as we start to tune into this, and if you practice Qigong or yoga, or there's all sorts of energy work available and accessible these days. Another good practice is a thing called Kum Nyai. Um, Kum Nyai, it's a Tibetan exercise, they're similar to Qigong. You start to cultivate energetic sensitivity. Yeah. And you start to demonstrate to yourself on a daily basis with each and every practice that you expand beyond the skin border, that you have access to tune in to things at great distance, infinite distance. And what allows you to connect and relate is your capacity for focus or in where you place your intention. Yeah. So the field dynamics of potential change everything, our capacity to access this. Um, does anyone have any questions about this? You know, this is, there's five of us viewing in this moment. Do you have any questions? How does this feel to hear this distinction between what I'm calling onboard potential, the things that we cultivate within our human instrument, and this accessing of potential in the field? Yeah. How is that for you? 
I'm just going to have a little bit of tea here. In case you're wondering, this is Argentinian mate. You drink it through. It's called a bombija. So yesterday we explored presence as quantum presence. Yeah, I'm not in a skin border. I'm in interrelationship, a multi-dimensional connection with all that is. We are one with life, always have been, cannot not be. We've been trained to live in a sense of separation, which then breeds activity of survival and all sorts of incoherent behaviors that are trying to conform to this survivalist approach, which is ultimately a stress response. That we become a prisoner of belief, prisoner of thought, prisoner of self-definition. And most people live inside of this entrapment of a false identity that is not you, that is not the essence, your heart essence, your presence, your resonance, your vibration. As we start to shift our paradigm from this skin-boarded, story-based identity into I am a multi-dimensional being existing in relationship with all of life, yeah, much like the Native Americans talk about this, this complete communion with nature, the natural world, great spirit, all at once. Yeah, the Japanese say that they exist in relation to all the ancestors. So instead of this specific individual self, I coexist in like a family dynamic. I became more and more aware of this um, when I had children. Yeah, this expansion and inclusion. My sense of self was built as a family being, not so much as guy separate. Every decision, thought, feeling, sensation is including everyone around you. So we're much more in relationship than we might tell ourselves in our brain. You know, we are, we're much more in relational field, participating, coexisting together with life all the time. So as we start to shift the paradigm into being a quantum being, you start to move from what we called yesterday original blessing, or wholeness, completeness, and this problematic sense of self falls away. This idea of a self that's struggling and stressing and forcing and fighting to exist, this, this just all drops away as we shift the paradigm of who and how we are. Now I call this returning to your original blueprint. In the same way that everything in creation has a blueprint I had a vision once of these archangel architects, designers, designing blueprints of trees and birds and flowers and us. And it's a very specific job. You know, it's like actually on the design board, crafting out the different features and capacities of these different organisms and vehicles of expression. Just got this sensation that there's a inherent blueprint for all of us, like a perfect design. And we get lost in the mind, trying to find out the design instead of feeling into and allowing. I was considering like the acorn today, acorn planted into the good nutritious soil. It's not being told every day by people around and other acorns, you should be this religion, that politics. Now, the acorn is planted into the soil, the sun, the rain comes and grows and becomes this mighty oak tree. So it has this inherent design, the seed knows the oak tree, without having to be told. And look at us, you know, it's like my daughter, she's 10 months now, it's like she's, you know, developing her body, her movement, her teeth. It's like, how do you grow teeth? How do you know movement? How do you know how to breastfeed? How do you know how to speak? It's like these things just emerge. There's a design, innate design, which is not needed to be trained by thought or controlled by ideas. So this is something about the intentionality of dropping back into our original blueprint to consider the possibility there is one and that perhaps driving ourselves by knowledge and ideas and force is not the way. That's based on a beta wave rhythm which is based on an interpretation that I'm a separate identity. Your belief determines your behavior. Okay. So whatever you believe, there's a certain behavioral codes that go together with that belief. If you change the belief, if you drop the belief, 
you move into this state of ethics that I talked about yesterday, this inherent natural state of presence, then you start to function in a different way. Your behaviors start to function and operate from your source energy and consciousness instead of from ideas, belief, stories, expectations, standards. So just consider how this may be for you to live in this inherent freedom that's already here, that's always already here, and is us. We're designed as this. So I know I quoted yesterday, I love the poem, I'm a hidden treasure and I love to be known by Rumi. Our inherent design is we are a treasure, we are an abundance of potential, onboard potential, accessible potential. We're designed to share our gifts. Jackie was asking yesterday about vision, life purpose. What about this consideration that they're on board, they're already here, they're already innate. And the more we listen in to who we are and how we are, the more they naturally emerge by themselves. Yeah, this is emergent quality. Let's just take a moment just to let these words just settle in. And just start to notice if anything's been activated or triggered or inspired by this dialogue. I want you to consider the two different positions. The position of a conditional sense of self that is adhering to beliefs and the behaviors that come from those beliefs. And a self which is embedded in freedom, which is embedded in the quantum field, which is intimately connected with all that is, and is living from this presence, this source energy and consciousness. And the behavior is more responsive, intuitive, synchronized. So just consider these two different positions and ways of being in you, as you. So if you swing your attention to being quantum being, quantum presence, connected to the quantum field with this resource energy of infinite intelligence and energy, just tuning into this and just consider all human beings being brought up with this awareness. Children bring birth into an awareness of their own inherent freedom and giftedness and talents and resources. And just fast forward this five years, ten years, a hundred years, just see how humanity would be, could be, can be, as we start to operate from a different comprehension of what it means to be human. This is why I call this the new vision, new view challenge, to really re-envision the nature of humanity. I don't know how you experience it, but when I observe and look out into the world, what I see is a lot of stress, depression, anxiety, fear, confusion, loss of meaning, loss of spirit connection, loss of understanding, loss of kindness, not all that I see, but I see this is often occurring in our species. And when I observe this more deeply, my realization is this is all based on a fundamental error in an interpretation of who and how we are. We're deciding we're skin bound, imprisoned thought forms, story based beings. This uh, egoic state that feels it's separate from the wholeness and lives in this independence with survival and determinism and will and power where it perceives another member of the species as a threat, as an enemy, as something hostile that could take your resources, your energy, your presence, your life. So there's this fear-based, identity-based prison based interpretation of the human being. If you keep reinforcing this, if we keep believing this and keep expressing this image out to the world, training the next generation in this identity image based sense of self, then it's going to perpetuate these behaviors, these conditions, these expressions. 
But this other consideration, this what we call awakening, is this you can call it a movement, but it's, it's deeper than a movement. It's a profound realization of dropping deeper than the story, going underneath, expanding, allowing, realizing. You know, not the cultural narrative, not your family narrative, not the religious narrative. Your present wisdom, your innate indwelling consciousness and energy. So I would say a large part of my awakening has been based on listening. Yeah, not this thirst and grasping of knowledge over there, but this deep inner listening to the book of life that I am that's already here. Listening and responding. Yeah. Responding, not reacting. Becoming responsive to my interior connectedness. So I really invite you to, to keep breathing from this position, it's not even a position, but from this perspective, this context of freedom. That your starting place is fullness and completeness and blessing and grace and life. Yeah, this is your starting place. So my work in the world, if you like, we can call it work, capital W, is to share what I realize, what I know, what I feel, in the wish and intention that it inspires you to see yourself in the reflection of this and to be a consideration for the possible. Now, I don't know how it is for you, please comment how it is for you. The experience you have when you live inside of a contracted state, tense survival state, and the experience you have when you live from this already always beautiful freedom, contentment, ease of being, which some people are calling flow state these days. Or you're in the zone, or in the harmonic resonance. And how this completely alters and shifts our way of being, relating, expressing, and creating. Now, when you start to allow yourself to be who you actually are, so you give permission to this give permission to you to exist in your truth yeah, not an idea of truth not fulfilling another's expectation not pleasing anyone else not becoming part of the herd instinct to belong and selling out on your own soul your own heart your own truth to somehow fit in when you recognize the end of the social game, the persona, the looking good, the status, the appearance, all these false needs of likability from outside in, a search for love instead of the realization that I am love. So it's catching yourself inside of all of these games, agendas, power plays, and in the awakening, in the awareness of this, what then naturally emerges is your heartful potential. That naturally emerges all by itself. Our onboard intelligence, our accessible wisdom, which is often called a state of communion or atonement in certain terminology, we just wake up to this and we function as this. So I'm going to describe to you the different process that I went through and just to see if you relate to this transition, because I call it a transitional phase. So maybe you're in complete resonance with what I say and you live like this and you know this, or maybe this is feeling new or this is inspiring or it's considering a possibility, or maybe you're in complete resistance to this 
and rejection of what I'm saying. You know, all positions are fine. All positions are where you currently are. So the important thing is to begin where you are. If you're in resistance and reaction and judgment and opinion, begin from there. If you're in ease of being and resonance and harmony and recognition, begin from there. This honesty. So to know where I presently am and to allow this to be. And then to consider these words, to consider this presentation that we are a quantum being in a quantum field, quantum possibilities. We are a dynamic life force. We are gifted from love as love. We have onboard wisdom and access to universal wisdom. But there's a deep blueprint of my potentiality that I am realizing as I awaken. That I have superb intelligences and capacities, you know, which are often considered to be superpowers for the interpretation of the egoic materialistic self. Things like clairvoyance and empathy and healing, transmission of energy. You know, these things are very normal and natural as you start to open up into your quantum beingness. They're the natural response of different dimensions, functioning, connecting, relating. Just allowing yourself to shift from one state to another. Now I call it the trampoline effect. So in one moment we're bouncing high as a joy. Yes, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. I see it, I see it, I am this. Yeah, I recognize this. And then we come back down to the, we hit the trampoline again. And there's this moment that it's sinking down. It's just sucked back into the past interpretation, the past behaviors. And then we bounce again. Yeah, so this bouncing between. So often this is what it's like. We, we go between expansion and contraction, expansion and contraction. Awakening and sleeping, awakening, sleeping. And this is the wrestling match, our internal wrestling match with ourselves. I don't know if you relate to this. This internal wrestling match, this, this inner combat, if you like, between a sense of position and freedom. Position, freedom, agenda, power, play, openness, expansion. Until eventually, 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 it becomes more interesting to enjoy the bounce. Enjoy the bounce. And then to come off the trampoline and not need the bounce to feel the expansion. It's established. It's as you. When it's become you, you've realized it is you. And you are this. And have always been this. And in that moment, you've established the realization in such a way that it influences your whole way of seeing, your whole way of behaving, your whole way of expressing and relating. And this is genuine transformation. And this also requires, at some initial stage, some deep commitment to this. Like a wish to like penetrate all the way into the depths of my heart. To move beyond the cultural hypnotism. You know, the social story. To so have faith at the beginning. Faith that there is more to me than meets the eye, and you, and life, and reality. So there's this uh, sense of a quest, or a search, or an initiative to open up. And at this stage, we often meet lots of practices. Your breath practices, release practices, meditation practices, energy practices. And these things are all very useful and important to to break up the old patterning and to create more spaciousness so we create gaps in time we start to learn to move more consistently into alpha wave theta, delta, gamma we're establishing a state of presence and I always talk about this as a balance between the paradigm yeah, like which is the totality of the vision and the practice yeah. It's the balance between these two things. If you're practicing like the most mystical breath energy exercise and your belief system is a material being skin boarded, run by stories and belief, then that profound exercise is not going to be profound in your experience. It's going to be limited by your own definition of yourself. If you 
have shifted and are shifting into this realization I'm a quantum being interconnected with all things. I have multi-dimensional possibilities. There's more to me than meets the eye. When you do exactly the same practice, you move into bliss. You move into inspiration. Because the practice can really get to work on all the levels. This is why, you know, you go to a yoga class, some people are just stretching and, you know, there's no judgment in this, but just doing the physical exercise. And other people have this paradigm of self-realization, quantum field, do the same exercises, but enter into completely different states. I don't know how it is for you, but I've seen many people in bliss states, ecstatic states, grace states. And I would, if I were to ask them, I'm pretty certain I would get a response that they already have a deep understanding and opening that these things are possible. Their surrender into that innate freedom is already there. And so these experiences have permission to happen. This is why I'm going to insist on this. You know, this new vision of yourself and reality is, is significant. So this is not just behavioral shifts. This is why a New Year's resolution doesn't work, unless you've got a new year paradigm shift. Yeah, unless you're just doing a behavioral shift. And the behavior is not going to stick if the paradigm hasn't shifted to match the new behavior. So for example, quantum <laughs> resolution would be to develop my capacity for vision, to develop my capacity for energetic transfer through space and time. I'm going to demonstrate this inside of my new beingness. Yeah, the new being, new capacities that go with that beingness. So the actual human experience is you get this upgrade. That's what it feels like. You're up-leveling or recalibrating. There's different words for this. As you start to, your vibration raises, your consciousness raises, as you start to access different dimensions of yourself. And then very naturally, new things become possible because you're available for them. So the shift in paradigm, it could begin as a belief. You might entertain the possibility that what I'm saying is true. You may not know it yet because you may not have the experience of this. But at least the belief towards it is the beginning place. Now that belief, as you enter the practice and the experience, translates into knowingness. And knowingness is direct. You know, once you know something, you don't need the belief. The belief was a vehicle that helped you make this transition. So yesterday I said beyond beliefs, and now I'm saying utilize beliefs as vehicles to help you transit from one sense of self into a more expanded sense. But once you've arrived in, arrived in your innate freedom, you don't need a belief to tell you who you are, because you are it, you know it, and you feel it. So I'm aware I'm talking for a long time, been talking for over an hour now, and I'm curious how you're hearing what I'm saying, those of you who are listening right now, whether you have any comments, or questions or areas you'd like me to look into. I've got a lot more to share on potential and I've got a few exercises that we can do, a few practices. Okay, I tell you what, let's do an energy exercise, shall we? Shall we just do a little demonstration that there is no time and space between us? Now this is also interesting because this is being recorded. So people are gonna see this later and Later, there will also be no time and space between us. You'll receive the transmission in the present moment and the timelessness of now. I'll just tell a little story before we do the practice. So I trained as a healer, and what that means is working with energy transfer and what people call spirit or inspiration, and learning to transfer energy through the vehicle of my humanity into another, either in close proximity or at a distance. Now, distance healing always fascinated me. Thank you, <laughs> Christina. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you for interacting. So distance, what people call distance healing, always fascinated me because it introduced me this possibility that there is no time and space between us. There's no physical limits. There's no imprisoning ideas that I can't move energy from here to there, from here to you, from here to the universe. 
So just consider the possibility. What healing is demonstrating is there's no limit to time and space. So there's an energy in the universe that we can access, and in the accessing, combined with intention, we can direct that to one another. So I was at home, and um, uh, which was in, at the time was in Loughborough. I was at Loughborough University in England, and I was meditating, and I got into a, a zone, alpha, theta zone. I could feel that because I've got certain symptoms or energies that move in my system that show me when I've arrived in a certain state of consciousness and awareness. It's like you move through different dimensions from the stress dimension, there's more relaxation, more openness, and then vision starts to come, energy starts to flow. So I'm aware of when I've shifted into a certain state. So I got myself into the healing zone or the energy transfer zone, and I started to visualize my mum, who's all the way down in Somerset, which is, if you know England, it's probably three hours, four hours away. And I tuned in and I sensed my mum was sitting in her chair in the living room where she always sits. And in that moment, I visualized placing my hands on her shoulders and breathing into my heart and breathing out from my heart, sending golden energy through my arms, hands into her shoulders, into her body, into her being. So I was breathing, this contemplation, this energy transfer. And I was sitting there with my hands like this, sitting there, as if my mum's shoulders were right where I was up in Loughborough. So I'm doing, I didn't ask my mum, didn't phone up my mum, didn't tell her that I was doing this. I just had this inspiration to send some healing to my mum. Yeah, so I'm here like this. And then suddenly I fall forwards like this. And I felt my mum wasn't there anymore. So I got really curious and I phoned her immediately. And she said that she was sitting on a chair and she just got up from her chair just now. And that prior to that, she was feeling some warmth and connection with me. Right, this was very interesting. I, was, I think I was 19, 20 at the time. And this was fascinating. It's like, so I was there and I was in Loughborough. I was with her and I was in my own space simultaneously. From a materialist perspective, you know, we would call that by location. I'm in two places at once. How's that even possible? Well, what makes it possible is our intention. What makes it possible is this deeper understanding that our quantum being is connected to the quantum universe. Our multidimensionality is connected to the multidimensionality of life. So we coexist on lots of different states of consciousness and energy. So right now I'm sitting here in Prague. Here I am at my desk in my room. And you're sitting where you are in the world but just we've just imagined and opened the doorway that there is no space and time between us that right now in this moment we're together we're in a in a room in a in a spaciousness where consciousness and energy is connecting us right now just want you to breathe into this let's start to tune into this together everybody's listening So just start to feel that we are sitting in a circle right now. And there's a candle in the center. I want you to imagine the candle. We're focusing into the candle and we decide to hold hands. So we're sitting in a circle holding hands together. We don't know the names. We don't necessarily know the stories, the history, even the shape and the form. But somehow there's a sensation of I'm holding hands together with brothers and sisters right now whoever's tuning in. I invite you to breathe in through your left hand. Feel it passing through your heart and out through the right hand. Breathing in through the left. Charging up your heart and then send the energy through the right hand. Wait to sense as you're breathing in, really receiving the energy from the one sitting beside you. And on the out breath, really transmitting the energy through the right hand. We're introducing this energy of calm and peace and harmony. So just breathing in this all together, tuning into this energy, calling upon this. Feeling this harmony spreading through you through the hands that you're holding, through the circle we're sitting in.
Let us all just, in our imagination, we open our inner eye and we see the candle in the center. I want you to breathe in and connect to the candle while you're holding hands in a circle. As you're breathing in, feel that candle is reflecting the light in your heart. Breathe into the heart as the light. Breathe out as the light. We're starting to build temple of light, a circle of light between us. Breathing into it, it gets bigger and stronger. Breathing out, it's radiating from you. And everyone else is receiving that radiance. So very gently, we're just going to let the hands go either side. I invite you to practice this. Give the hands a good rub together. So you, you might want to just open your eyes for a moment, rubbing the hands together. You just put your left hand here, your left hand, and then the right hand moves around the left hand. That's the movement, okay? So you give your hands a rub together. Left hand is still, and the right hand moves around. Breathing, breathe in. Breathe out. So I want you to feel that the right hand is transmitting. The left hand is receiving. So breathing in, just become very receptive in your left hand and notice if there's any tingling, any heat, any feeling, any sensation. In the right hand, which is moving around, just feel that you have a sun in your hands, an energy ball. And that you're deliberately, consciously, lovingly sending that energy into the left hand. Okay, now the hands come a bit closer together, and I just want you just to expand this. So imagine there's a ball of glowing golden sun between your hands, and you can feel it. This is often in Tai Chi, it's called a chi ball, energy ball. So you're breathing in, expands, squeezing it. So you can feel the energetic presence between your hands. So what we're doing here is we're calling forth the energy from the imaginal realm and we're translating that into the three-dimensional. We're pulling it in through our imagining. So breathe in, feel the golden ball between your hands. And just start to move the right hand around the left a bit more. Just so you start to get that tingling, warm feeling. Okay. okay. Now in this circle, we decide to sit opposite somebody. Okay, so it's the invitation to sit opposite a companion. So we're all sitting opposite somebody now. Okay, so we're gonna turn the hands like this. You can have your eyes open if you like. All right, so I'm imagining there's one person sat opposite me. Okay. And this is my right hand, okay? It's my left hand. All right, so my left hand is gonna say still. With your right hand, I want you to move the energy. Yeah. Now in my visualization, I am seeing one person opposite me, but this one person represents all of you. Okay. So I want you to close your eyes and become super sensitive in your left hand for a moment. Tune into your left hand. <coughs> I want you to see if you can sense or feel energy, tingling, any movement in the left hand. As you can feel that, feel it flowing up through your left arm, across your shoulders, across your chest, your whole body, through your heart. It comes across to the right shoulder, right hand, and the right hand is now sending the energy to the left hand of the other. So really focus on the right hand now, a giving hand it's often called or known as actively transmitting energy through the right hand and knowing it's being received in this moment of presence in this moment of power in this moment of life and 
Now, because we're cosmic beings, quantum beings, we can simultaneously become aware of our right and left hand at the same time. So you're just spreading your attention now. So we need to become aware through the left hand of receiving at the same time as transmitting through the right hand. Okay, so we've activated the energy. I can certainly feel lots of tingling in my left hand right now, which increased just now. So we're now going to send an intention. So this golden light that's pouring out of my right hand into all of you, symbolically, there's one person in front, everybody hoping to receive this. Just want to transmit the energy, the intention to you of contentment. Okay. And contentment for me is a harmonic balance, an ease of being. So we're adding consciousness to the energy. Yeah, our intention is powerfully guiding the energy into the experience of contentment. So all of us, I want to breathe in and breathe out. We're breathing in contentment. Breathing out contentment. Sensing this golden energy moving in through the left hand, out through the right hand, as contentment. I'm just feeling this energy spreading out to the one in front of you, to everybody in the space spreading out to the species, seeing the planet, seeing the multiverse, just feeling that there is only contentment present here, golden love, golden wisdom, we are this, and we're sharing this. This moment of stillness, you can open the eyes if you like. Just bring the hands into this what we call prayer posture, namaste posture. Just giving thanks for whatever you felt in this moment, whatever you experienced. And then you bring the energy into your heart and sweep it through your body. Just gently landing the energy back here into your physical experience. And again, softly opening your eyes. Softly opening your eyes. So you're staying present here in your physical presence at the same time as being energetically sensitive. Okay, so I'm just reading Benjamin's comment here. So you felt pain in your left hand, and there's some stuck energy in it. Okay, this is one interpretation. Okay, this is one interpretation. I also felt in the palm of my hand an intensity of energy here, like a sharp energy here. Okay, and I breathed it in and allowed it to soften and spread through my system. Okay, and the way I comprehend this, and it may not be your experience, Benjamin, or anybody else, is that this interaction with the energy field is like we're remembering to open energy gateways. It's a bit like we're, we're placing, <laughs> it's like we're opening energy gateways, which maybe were a bit closed. It's like they're, they've been a bit out of use, a bit unfamiliar, or never been in use. So there's this movement of energy coming into and through, and we're kind of getting used to opening to energetic sensitivity. This is one way of viewing this. Yeah. What I invite you to do, if it's still there, there's two things you can do. One is you can you can shake the energy up. You can shake. You know, it's just release energy through the hands. Or the other thing, you can stick your hands in some water if you want to. That also helps discharge any energy there. Yeah. And the reason. <laughs> Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you, Benjamin, for saying that. The quantum field is a reality. I hope you're reading the comments, everyone. Benjamin says, yes, it's right there, 100% spot on. Yeah. 
him. Now, anyone else, feel free to comment if you felt anything or didn't feel anything or are curious about what's happening there. The reason I wanted to offer this is a, a small demonstration of the quantum field and how we can operate the field. Now, my understanding is that we, we live in this sea of consciousness and energy. And it depends where we focus from is the quality of our experience. If I'm focusing, like yesterday we spoke about the wave and the ocean phenomena. If I'm focusing as a wave, then I've limited myself to a certain perspective and I experience the waves, the waves, the waves. If I experience myself in this oceanic awareness, then I experience myself more as an ocean, as a sublime, mystical, all-inclusive state of being. So this is to do with the expansion of our vision. And this challenge is new vision, new view. I'm inviting us into the consideration that we are life. We're not a limited identity that lives on an island, egoic island, separated from everything and everyone else in some kind of vacuum of thoughts and stories and memories. I'm inviting us to consider the possibility that we are at one with life always have been, that we are the living extension of source energy, that we are present right now as quantum beings in a quantum field. There's an appearance of a character called Guy, Benjamin, Christina, and others who are here watching now and later. There's an appearance of your identity, but the source energy of your being is the same source energy that we all coexist together with. And I quoted it yesterday, Martin Luther King, we're the same, same, but different. The same in our quantum presence, the same in our quantum field, and different in our particular unique expressions of this through the particular costume, through this particular human vehicle, vessel, instrument that I'm currently occupying and manifesting through. So it's this reorientation of the nature of self, not just as an idea, but as a living phenomena. Yeah. What it gives me to know myself as a quantum being gives me access to the quantum field. As many of you know me, I'm very inspired pretty much all the time. Lots of creativity, energy, projects, connections. You know, this is my constant state of being because I live in a sea of consciousness and energy where it's possible to be inspired all the time, to live open-hearted, to live energetically sensitive, to live with clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairparlance, to live with transmission of energy. These things are very normal and natural for me. These are the corresponding phenomena that come from knowing yourself as a quantum being with limitless potential. And the practice that's really helped me stabilize into this has been meditation over the years. Yeah. Meditating, listening through the story layers, deepening, listening through the feeling reactions and layers, listening through sensation, dropping into and as silence, being presence, and making that my home, making that my treasure, my foundation. And keep practicing, 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 expanding consciousness and energy so you don't become a, a visitor, a tourist into great spirit. You become a resident. So it's not a hobby. It's not a spiritual hobby. It's not an accessorizing endeavor to get a bit more confidence, a bit more self-esteem. It's not something that I do as an egoic extension to glamorize this egoic self. So cultivating a spiritual identity. No, it's a profound realization that I am this, that we are this. We've always been this. And it's the giving up of the story that we're not this. So there's a meditation practice in India called Neti Neti, which simply means not this, not that. You know? So you, as you go through the inquiry, I'm not this, I'm not my thoughts, I'm not my emotions. I'm not my identifications, I'm not this physical body, I'm not this story I tell about my life, I'm not this history, I'm not these memories, 
right? It's this noticing what you're not, what you're not, you release this, you release this, you release this. And that's moving away the debris that you are buried under. And the more you release yourself from these interpretations, from these definitions, from these made up boundaries of a sense of self, the more your natural heart presence reveals itself all by itself. It's always been already here. So realization, awakening, is a discovery process. It's a revelation. When you tune into your depth, you naturally feel inspired, activated, energized, potentialized. I'm curious how you're receiving this. This deepening realization, I say quantum field because it's a scientific term, you could equally call it God consciousness or heart presence or in attunement with great mystery. You know, this is languaging things which are beyond language, they're reference points. So, this opening into something about us which is infinite. Yeah. I just get less and less interested in the story of a self that can't do, that's not able, that's somehow dysfunctional or problematic, you know, that insists upon limitations. It's just less and less interesting to me. It doesn't serve my heart, it doesn't serve my expression, it doesn't serve my dharma, my way of being from my potential. And so I've learned to hear most of this conversation simply as noise, like a conditional noise, like this software. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Hans. This conditional software that we are less than magnificent, less than whole. Noticing it, noticing it, noticing it, and giving it up. Happily, willingly giving up, letting it pass downstream inviting you to move to a place which is beyond the need for definition. You know, why do we need to define ourselves? Who's asking for my accreditations, my, you know, status, my, you know, university certificates? What does that mean, all these measures? You know, this, this social currency of expectation that we are constantly proving ourselves through standards which are set outside of us. It creates so much stress in trying to fulfill other people's agendas and expectations. And for me to get really, really, really present with who and how I am and to own this and to give permission to this and to allow this, give space to this and to come into this gentle enjoyment of your own self-presence you know, is such a shift from living inside of a, a story-identified idea of self. So I'm going to give you some homework, okay, between now and tomorrow, or now and forever, is to notice where you are contracted, to notice your stress points, to notice where you have entanglement in relationships, or you're in pain and blame and projection with people or situations around you. So become aware of the places of contraction. That's the first thing. Then start to consider, why am I so identified with this pain, with this suffering, with this confusion? Why am I so caught up in this story, this cultural narrative, this COVID fear, this new world order? Why am I caught up in this drama of the culture? What is this about me? And then the invitation is to reverse engineer this, is to rewind it back into you and see where it originates. Where are these primal fears coming from? Where is the wound in us that's causing this resonance? And to give love back into that place. To bring wholeness back to this place. Yeah. As we start to bring more and more love and compassion back to ourselves in the places that we've been wounded or experienced wounded or suffering or some version of imprisonment in some form, what happens is, is we take away the, dis the charge you know, the, the static electricity that's been causing this ripple effect of pain and suffering on the outside. We 
you transform the charge. Yeah. Now the test for this, yeah, just so you can test the whole process is working, is so you, you see the contraction on the outside, what you're entangled in, you bring the energy back inside, you do the healing work, rebalancing, energizing work with yourself. Then you look back out at the thing that was previously triggering you, annoying you, and you start to notice if you've resolved the energy inside of you that you're more peaceful with it. You simply observe it. You can see it in detail with curiosity, not with reactivity. So this is a way to, to do some deep work with ourselves, to notice our reactivity with the world, with people, relationships, where we make judgment, opinion, story. Rewind it. Take absolute responsibility for your experience, your perception of events and people, and to bring love there. As you bring love there, it resolves. The, the golden energy of love harmonizes unto itself. Everything in some form or other is calling for love, calling for the attention to be brought back home to essence. So we're deliberately doing that healing work. And then when we look out at the previous thing that was triggered or upset, or distorted, we find that we're more relaxed in the face of it. And we can actually bring love to it instead of bringing reaction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm just reading your words there, Benjamin. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see the question. What does it mean if we both felt the same pain in the left, left hand? Can you tell me some more about that? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Benjamin, my sense is that we're in empathic resonance and that we're tuned in with each other and that we're united and there's a brotherhood between us. And in this way, we get transferring uh, sensitivity and connection across time and space that there is no division between us. There's no division between any of us. You know, we can tell a story that you live in a different country, you live in a different time zone, you're a different person, but deep down my heart knows you and all of us in presence. So I would invite you to enjoy what you felt briefly as pain in your left hand as simply a resonant connection that the energy was just meeting there. And it leads to a deeper, profound understanding that we can feel and sense each other across time and space. And that was the purpose of the demonstration, that there are no limits between us. This interpretation of an identity that sits here in Prague, in this bedroom, doesn't mean at any level that I'm disconnected from you, or life, or anything, or anyone. Yeah. I don't know about you, and you know maybe this is, for a lot of people this will sound inappropriate, but for me this uh, period of isolation has actually been a profound state of communion and connection in depth with more people that I physically have been in contact with. I've noticed that in this interior time, I've gone deeper into myself and feel a more state of communion with more people from the heart, deeper down, and uh, feel there's an opportunity here for all of us to, to utilize this winter time, this dreaming bear time, to deepen our connection with ourselves, which intrinsically deepens our connection with all things. Thanks for the reflection question, Benjamin. Yeah. So we got 15 minutes. There's a few other things I would just like to say about potential, just to give a, a few more distinctions. Yeah. So another thing I was considering today was this difference between biological and electrical. Yeah. Now, some of you know this, but um, I think it was 12 years ago, I got struck by a ball of lightning. Um, I was doing the washing up in England and there was a thunderstorm and this fork of lightning hit the ground and it sends off these balls of energy yeah. and one of them came in through the kitchen window hit me in the elbow and charged me up like like, like really just knocked me and hit me with this vibration and it didn't kill me like that, but I felt this lightning move through my system and from that day forward, you know, in that, in that moment, it became obvious to, to give up eating meat and not have any alcohol and, and I had to exercise. It's like there was a complete shift, like my body vibrated at a different level and had different needs, had different responses immediately. 
And for a month, a whole month, I lived on lightning. My vibration was upgraded. I could see very clearly. I knew, was connected. There was more healing transfer through me. I was living much more from an energetic sensitivity instead of a thought interpretation. And I felt it and experienced it and received it as an initiation from life to like show me what it's like to live as an energy body. After about a month, and it was almost exactly a month, I actually felt this electrical energy pouring out through my fingers. I felt the lightning leave my system. Now, it had done its work. It spent a whole month living and vibrating and recalibrating and energizing and uplifting. And it trained me on the inside what it's like to live at a different level of vibration. So this initiation opened me and I trained myself to live at the level of lightning. Yeah, this brightness. This inner luminosity. This is the, the way that I've understood any initiation. You're shown something, invited into something. Yeah. So you see the next horizon of what you're expanding into, what you're evolving into. And then you're given the space to then align yourself and build your energy to become that. So we keep meeting mentors and friends and guides and inspirators and visionaries at the right moment for us to show us the next step for us. And then with that next step, hopefully you discover a practice or an energy or a way of being that allows you to establish that in your system. So it becomes more and more established. Yeah, just, what does Christina say? Which it gives us a chance to connect more, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful, Christina, yeah, I feel that too, absolutely. So this lightning experience, initiation, allowed me to grow my vibration to become as lightning for a while. Yeah. Now I want to talk about this in terms of potential, because for me I have biological potential, the potential of this physical body, breath, energy, blood flow, wonderful autonomic nervous system, all the abilities of breathing, heartbeat and everything. I am so grateful for my physical incarnation and the capacity of the body. And most of these things operate in my unconscious. Luckily, my heart beats without me having to consciously beat it. My breath comes without me having to consciously breathe it. And then there's other areas of my evolution, my awakening, which I would call electrical. Yeah, so just consider this distinction between biological potential and electrical or vibrational. Yeah. Now, you may or may not be familiar um, with the chakras or the energy vortices that operate in and around our bodies. If you don't know about these, just type it into Google, put the word chakra, and you'll see seven chakras coming up with all sorts of different interpretations. But the chakras are an invitation for us to explore that we're not just a physical body, we're also an energy body. As we get more and more sensitive, we start to become to notice these energy movements through our system, which then have physical corresponding effects. Now the quantum field, for me, is electrical. It's vibrational. Even our biology is vibrational, but let's just, for the time being, let's work with the distinction that there's a biology which is a receiving mechanism, and there's electrical impulse, which is the consciousness that's traveling into the biology. Rupert Sheldrake, who's this fantastic biologist from Cambridge University in England, has written works on non-locality and morphic resonance, and he has a description he said the mind is non-local yeah so it's not localized in the biology and we have localized brain and localized body yeah and the mind is interacting with the brain and the body so we have this non-local phenomena which is what i'm calling the quantum field and you've got this localized receiving mechanism which is your physical experience yeah. and there's this constant interaction engagement between the two so what I experience right now is that I'm receiving electrical download which is being translated into a biological phenomena which can translate into thought, feeling, emotion, sensation or what we call human experience. Now you can also see this electrical phenomena is the realm of inspiration or grace or the holy fire or the holy spirit or the life force or prana, it's different names but it's interacting with this instrument, this human instrument. Now, if this is the case, then our work, 
part of our work is learning how to access and work with electrical vibration and translate that through our human experience. I highly recommend uh, we all do some Qigong or Kun Nei or energy work practices so you can start to open up and become more and more familiar with the energetic workings of the field awareness around you. Yeah? I am certain that this is what we're moving into as a species. The, the next wave of comprehension of us as human beings is that we're going to have multi-dimensional electrical biological beings both and together and our potential is both physicalized and non-local simultaneously. I don't know about you but hopefully you get excited about this because your range of potential is suddenly switched up from being just what's inside the box of the brain and the physical experience into the whole multiverse to learn to access we're going to move into this tomorrow as we explore vision, the realm of vision, and the next day we're going to refine it even more as we move into intention. On the last day, we're going to ground it through action. So this series, this challenge, you know, presence, potential, vision, intention, action is one whole flow. So even if you're not able to come on these evening calls, they're all going to be recorded and uploaded invite you to go into this inquiry to digest the whole view if you like the whole vision the whole way it's put together because it makes more and more sense as you see more of this Okay, so I'm just going to give a, a brief summary and then lead us into a little meditation to round up for this evening. So the main principles, if you like, that I've presented today is this sense that we're both local and non-local. <laughs> that we're both physical and the quantum field. We're both and, and, and that we're not limited by our skin borders or thought interpretations yeah. that this character this persona is the instrument of expression through which cosmic consciousness is manifesting so we are all the living extensions of source energy and consciousness and this is the beautiful uniqueness originality and colors that we all bring to the world this is the play it's called the Leela, the divine play of our self-expression the one self is expressing through the many selves, the many bodies, the trees, the flowers, the birds, the rivers, the mountains, the skies, the stars. Everything is an instrument of expression of the quantum field, the quantum heart field, the divine force, the sacredness. So you start to notice this. You start to recognize, as the Native American Indians say, that everything is a brother and a sister. Everything. Every species, every aspect of creation. We touched on it yesterday, the imminence of the feminine, the sacred feminine principle, to recognize that the goddess energy has never left us, that we are this, it's always surrounding us. Yeah, we are this, and we are in communion with this. So Gaia, living earth, the, the, the Gaia of the whole, the, the living intelligence throughout the whole of creation, every star, every planet, everything. There is no dead matter. There is no lack of intelligence with or lack of energy. Everywhere is infused with this hologram. Everything is the allness. And everything is a gateway back to God. Everything is a meditation. Everything is a, a pathway home. And everywhere is a church. Everywhere is a temple. And we are the temple. We can tune in through ourselves and come back home to our original essence. And the invitation is the surrender practice of meditation, where you drop the identification. There may be some fear, there may be some resistance, there may be some blockage, there may be some sabotage, but I want you to keep inviting from your deeper heart place, it's okay to let go. 
it's okay to open up, to have faith, to come into a state of your natural heart ethics. And I was inviting us at the beginning to recognize that, consider the possibility there is a natural blueprint for the human species. Human, I don't know if you know this, who is the word means divine. Man comes from the original Adam, who was both androgynous, man, woman. So who man is the divine man, woman. It's in our wording. I'm a divine man, woman being, human being. I'm humankind. You know, that we're oriented just through the languaging to our essence. I'm a beingness that's kind, that's already sacred. You know, it's like it's coded into the language for us to remember, to reconnect. So my wish and my inspiration for offering this new vision work has been to inspire us to consider the possibility that we are quantum beings, heart-centered beings, that we have infinite access to the, to the non-local field, which is actually local to our awareness because we are it. So even that languaging has to shift and change. And we're exploring new paradigm that opens up new possibilities. It's quoted that Jesus said that new wine needs new wine skin. You wouldn't put new wine into an old bottle that's smelly and dirty because it would influence the new wine. And this is what we're talking about in this work here. The new wine of awakening we want to put into a new paradigm that is a good match for this. That naturally explains telepathy, empathy, clairvoyance, healing, transmission, and all these things that everybody I know experiences. We're trying to pour these experiences into an old paradigm that doesn't match, that doesn't align, that doesn't fit. So this work is as much updating the paradigm as it is updating the experiences that become possible. Okay, so just a, a simple meditation to, to close our work this evening. So might you close your eyes. Nice deep breath in through the nose and through the mouth. As you're breathing, just become sensitive for the feeling of the air coming into the nostrils and out through the mouth. So give your attention to the breath. Start to open up your awareness that this is the breath of life that's always been here. We're breathing into the quantum field of breath, prana, life force. Not just the biological oxygen, but also the vibration of consciousness and energy, which is equally alive within the breath. So drawing this in, relaxing, and expanding. So as you're breathing, I invite you to shift your attention to be as the breath. So breathing that you are breath. Breath that's traveling into this human vehicle, traveling out through this human instrument. Placing your focus that I am the breath of life. And the breath of love, the breath of wisdom, the breath of energy, breathing in. Now breathing as, just breathing as all of this. From this perspective of breath, I invite you to visualize your, your body, your human instrument, your human vehicle, vessel. And I want you to send tremendous love to every atom, every cell, every vibration, every characteristic, everything that you experience as this human experience, sending love, gratitude, appreciation, and blessings into this. 
breathe in. Send the breath of life in and through the body. With each breath, we're inviting for a deepening partnership, a flowing partnership, and where we can draw in the breath of life and express the wonder and the miracle of existence. If you feel ready to, I invite you to offer your body to the life breath, offering your body to be lived by the quantum heart field, by the oneness. Letting the master of the heart be in and as and through your embodied experience. See your body gladly receiving the presence of your heart, the presence of this infinite awareness, this life force. And inviting this prayer for us to be open to listen, to receive the guidance of the heart, to listen delicately to the whispers of inspiration, to be moved by love, and generosity, and abundance, and brightness, and to allow our human instruments with all of our onboard potentials and all of our accessible potentials, all of our biology and all of our vibration to be of good service for the life force, to be inspired in our actions, to feel purposeful, to feel meaning, to feel this contentment and satisfaction of being alive, connected, one. As you're breathing in, just feeling all of this is so, so be it. Amen. It is the way it is. This deep recognition of our original design, our natural blueprint, this harmonic resonance with the universe. And seeing ourselves getting more and more comfortable in living in this awakened paradigm which is coherent with our experience and feeling ourselves establish more and more as this and the stories and the limitations and the self-definition that inhibits us to see it just naturally dissolve and drop away and losing its power as it reintegrates into the wholeness So as I'm breathing, I'm sensing you breathing, and we're all breathing together now, just closing our circle together for this evening. Closing in one way, opening in another. Just giving thanks for this moment, this shared experience. Just very gently opening our eyes, but softly keeping the breath going. Just inviting this feeling of connection to remain in you, as you, through you. And allowing the curiosity, allowing the inner whispers, allowing the inner vibrational promptings and impulses and giving more and more attention to the energetic experience of our human nature. That this spirit force, that all things are, becomes more of us. So thank you for this evening, for this exploration and inquiry into the nature of our potential. I invite you to carry on inquiring, being curious and opening, and questioning, and exploring. And tomorrow we're going to bring our attention to the realm of vision. And together with vision, we'll also explore the nature of purpose, and meaning, and mission, 
In the Buddhism they call this the Dharma, the work of the heart, or the Tao, or thy will be done, to get into the natural flow state of who and how we're designed to be, and to share with you ways of deliberately accessing vision on purpose. So it's not a random event to be inspired or creative, it's something that we can deliberately access. These uh, teachings, sharings, are offered for free, and they really generally are, really in, invite you to enjoy this with no charge. And if you wish to support this work in some way, I'm also creating a workbook, which is these teachings and more with some practices. It's expanding and it's going to be finished by the 27th of January and that's for £22 or I've got a online conscious creativity mastery course for £33 or you can just make a donation if you wish to so that would also be supportive for me to offer more of this work but I offer it in both ways it's free and a contribution so just tune in and feel what's good for you and it would be great if you want to share the link of the group with your friends so we can get more people into this inquiry and discussion and opening and exploration of this new paradigm that we're all evolving into and learning to be more of and how this can really contribute to the shifts that we're going through on the planet at this time this shifting awareness from fear into love into gratitude into celebration into honoring to respect and dignity and being the light carriers for this new message, this new mission, this new way. So thank you very much, everybody.